Hey everyone, Sain here. Welcome to my channel. It's story time. And this time I'm going to talk about a, my story. And um, it's not in the Bible or anything. So I don't want you guys to think that I'm basing myself on the Bible. I'm just sharing a story because I was convinced that I had to share it. It was the time. And hopefully it will bless somebody out there. So we're going to jump right into it. Um, I stopped talking to God. So I want to tell you why it started and how I stopped talking to God. Like I, I genuinely broke up with God. I did not want to talk to God anymore. How did it happen? It started while I was a student. I was an international student and I was waiting for a certain amount to be sent to me so I can complete my tuition fees. My tuition fees were super high as an international student. If you've ever been an international student, you will know what I mean. So I was praying for that and I spent some time praying for it and, and fasting. I decided that, you know what, I'm going to fast and pray and believe God that it's going to happen. Meanwhile, I also had... Um, a situation with my mother which uh, she was not feeling well she was she was she was sick she was not feeling well and I was also praying for her for that but I didn't know how bad it was for my mom and um, so I was studying I was busy studying busy thinking about my uh, my tuitions I was praying for my mom as well so I decided to pray for I believe for 30 days for a whole month, for a whole month. And I was believing God that God was going to heal my mom and that God's going to open a door for my tuition fees. So one day I woke up and that day I was like, yeah, I'm going to be so positive and I'm going to think positive. I'm going to expect positive things to happen to me. And today is going to be the day I had that feeling. I, I just felt like today was going to be a different day. Little did I know that it was not going to be the day that I expected that it was going to be. So I received a call, lo and behold, because I had a nudge in my spirit that today something was going to happen. And for some reason, I I thought it was something positive that was going to happen in my spirit. So when I received the call, the call was like, you and your siblings come to my house right now. It was my, my father's friend and he called us to go into his house urgently. And I'm like, okay, this is a good news and I'm supposed to get money. And he's the person that's supposed to give me the money. So I think this is the money is here. I'm going to have 30 K and I'm going to be so happy. Thank you, Jesus. I was super excited. So now the, the, my father's friend sends his chauffeur to us and then our my fr my siblings we hop in the car and then I wondered what a minute wait a minute why do I have to go with my siblings if the good news is just for me right uh maybe there's something else we need to know I have no idea let's go and see so I still was hopeful and I got there and we had dinner and then he took us to the rooms upstairs to give us the news and it was a bad news. So the call that I received and the invitation that I thought was going to be my breakthrough was actually not a good call because the news I got was that I had lost my mother. Imagine the disappointment, the hurt, the anger, the confusion, because usually when I feel something, uh, you know, when the Holy Spirit tells me that something is going to happen, it actually does happen. And the, the nudge that I felt in the spirit was not a sad thing. In the morning when I woke up and I was expecting something good to happen, it was never that news that I was expecting. Nobody wants to wake up and hear around 5 p.m. that they lost their mother. So I was devastated by that news. I didn't know what to think. I was angry at God. I was wondering why God did not tell me ahead of time because he never hides anything to his servants when he wants to do them. So I 
felt like I was somehow um, entitled to a little warning preparation so that I don't get the shock of my life but it did not happen so I was I was mad I was mad at God I was so mad that I decided that I was not going to talk to him anymore on that day after receiving the news I cried and I tried to understand I couldn't understand the reason why it happened so I just I just told God you know what you are sovereign you do whatever you want to do um so why should I bother even talking to you why should I bother praying why should I bother if at the end of the day you do whatever you want to do because I prayed you I asked you to heal my mom I had I asked you to keep her alive and she still passed away so why would I talk to you again God so that's the reason why I stopped talking to God Little did I know that he had everything under control still. You know, our thoughts are not God's thoughts. Remember I woke up that day happy, expecting something happy to happen. To me, it was not a, a happy event. <laughs> But in the spiritual, this was a happy thing because my mom ended up going in a better place. It took me a few weeks after I stopped talking to God. I really stopped praying. I really stopped singing to God, worshiping, even reading the Bible. I just didn't want to do anything with God anymore. And from that moment, what happened was I closed the doors to myself the access to God wasn't there anymore. I shut myself out of the presence of God. And what happens when you do that is the enemy is waiting for an opportunity to destroy you and to, to put you down. I was already down, but closing, shutting myself out of the access from God opened the door for the enemy to carry out his will in my life and I went into depression um, a lot of things happened I just went into a dark dark season from that point on now it didn't take too long for me to realize that I cannot do it without God I can't I will not go into details for my dark time that that season where things just went down spiral in my life because I just stopped ha communicating and having a relationship with God. So three weeks later, three, four weeks later, I came back to God and I asked him again, why did this happen? Okay, I can't live without you. I can't breathe without you. Every single step I need to make i have to make it with you so tell me what happened so i prayed and fasted and that day i spent time in the word and when i slept i had a dream where my mom and that was the first dream since i had that bad news where i saw her and she was in a better place and i was so happy to see her she was glowing when i saw her and i wanted to go to her and hug her and touch her and she was like you can't come to me You can't access me. And that was all it was happening in the dream. And she's like, you can't come to me. It's not your time right now. You cannot come. But where I am here, I am okay. I'm fine. I'm in a better place. And I woke up. My mom passing away, it was in the will of God. And she went to the Father. Later on, when I, I looked into her, her belongings and her Bible, she had a... She had bookmarks and she had highlighted uh, verses about going to heaven and going to see God. And uh, that's how I knew that she was actually prepared herself. She, she was prepared to go to see the Father. And it was time. And sometimes it's just time for God to call his children. No matter how we love them, 
we have to let them go. And when we think about it, they're happy where they are in a new place, in a better place with a father, especially if, if they actually passed on as Christians, as believers. So the most important thing is to make sure that your loved ones know Christ. Because when they passed on, when they pass on, then there's hope that they are in a better place. There's hope that they are in a better place. And there's also hope that you will see them again if we walk the walk and we we spend time with Christ. We accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. So what am I trying to say? I'm just here to encourage somebody today. Uh, sometimes it might sound like it's a bad news. But God is in the story still. God has a plan and God has a schedule. God has his seasons in which he works. And we as humans, we don't see the whole picture. And he's got it. In the room next door, there's a door separating you. And that's just what it is, heaven. They're just next door, but you can't access them yet. But one day, you will see them again. So it's just a temporary separation for people who died in Christ. Right? So the verses I wanted to share, Psalm 34, 18, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. No matter how things are going, no matter how bad it is, I know you're angry. I know you don't understand everything, but don't let the enemy access you by shutting yourself out of the presence of God. It's the worst thing ever especially if you're a servant of God and if you've been consistently serving God, you've done a lot of damage in the camp of the enemy and he will seize any opportunity that he, he sees to destroy you. So if you, you shut yourself out of the presence of God, then you're exposed to the enemy. Don't let it happen. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. That's Isaiah 41, verse 10. Do not fear, because the Lord will uphold you with his righteous right hand. And in Psalm 46, 1, it says, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in time of need, in trouble. This is a reminder that we need God more than He needs us. So, maybe I can save time to somebody out there. Don't shut yourself out of the presence of God. That's all I had to share. I hope somebody was blessed and I'll see you next time. Until then. Take care.